it's his probably the greatest World War One game ever. But I'm going to warn you guys. Um, number one, I can't play what is, in my opinion, an incredible soundtrack, true songs from the First World War. Uh, but the scope on this game, uh, it's called Age Odds to End All Wars, is absolutely massive. Uh, and when I say massive, I mean down to the very last detail. Um, you need to focus on supply. You need to focus on uh, your men's equipment. You need to focus on your men's morale. You need to focus on their food. It, it's, it's just, for those of you that want an extremely deep war game, this is going to be the one for you. Um, we're actually going to take a look at the grand campaign, although um, actually we're going to take a look at 1916 so that hopefully we get a look at a battle. But there is a grand campaign, which you can play over here as the Germans or as the allies, uh, completely up to you. Um, in this case, we will be playing as the Central Powers, uh, a.k.a. the Germans and their friends, and we're going to jump right into the game. Uh, as you can see, there is a... PBEM mode, uh, though you'd have to find people that still play this, but I wasn't kidding when I said that this game has a tremendous amount of depth and scope, as you can see here. Um, these are just the front lines. As you can see, these are all individual units, uh, individual fleets, uh, for instance, armies with their own specific commanders uh like over here we've got the Württemberg core a lot of central power units here we also have some really good um maps so let me try and see if i can find that it's been a while since i played but there we go so let's just see the region control map this makes it a lot easier to see where the french are where we are etc and the way you approach this in terms of combat gets really complicated i mean you've got this element of uh, being able to change the kind Kind of approach you take so <coughs> pardon me the kind of posture you take i should say um in this case we're going to take a defensive posture but this is a deep deep game you can't just jump right into it you definitely want to look at the tutorial uh, as you can see there's the ability to merge units there's the ability to create your own core armies etc uh, we could for instance take this army uh and add it to this one um, and now of course uh army under wilhelm von Prüben has a few more units, but if we give too many units to this army, uh, the provided command is going to be uh, way higher than the uh, required command, and so you're going to end up having actual problems. Um, you, of course, use these units to launch attacks into the lines of your enemy. In this case, we're going to attempt an all-out assault, and you'd never want to do this, actually. The only reason I'm doing this is to simply show you guys uh, what you get in the game. Uh, some units are garrison units, so they're unable to actually um, attack at all. They're unable to leave their particular area, let's say. Um, and again, as you can see here, I'm unable to take the assault posture, and that's because you need to prepare in this game. You, you can't just simply, you know, begin attacking willy-nilly the way I'm doing here. Um, and I'm, I've actually got the Kaiser himself here, so we might go ahead and do one massive attack with the Kaiser. Uh, into this region it's going to take 17 days uh, and i believe i could be mistaken but i believe it's 14 days a uh, total um that it takes for um the turn to end over here we've also got not just these decisions guys but we actually have a strategic atlas uh, which gives us um full information on our armies um etc but there's also a research element over here as you could see so you can fund aviation research, etc. Uh, there's other options that are unlocked over time. You can unlock certain ace uh, pilots, things like that. And I believe there are even political options you can make, some of them pretty brutal in the grand campaign. Anyway, we go ahead, we proceed to the next turn. Uh, and yeah, I was correct, it's 15 days. So some of the actions that we ordered won't resolve. And as a matter of fact, some of those actions, even if they should resolve in a certain time period, won't resolve due to factors completely outside of your control that's what makes this game in my opinion the best of the three um anything can affect you the weather perhaps uh, your men's supply depot or supply train breaks down any number of things can occur which change the outcome of the war and that random nature that's thrown in there i think that random chance really adds to the reality of this first world war conflict um again like i said that grand campaign Take a look at it if you want, but I'd recommend if you're going to go jump into this, play one of these earlier campaigns. And fair warning, this game has not been updated in a very, very long time. Uh, not saying it's bad or anything. Um, 
it's it works okay for me but you're gonna have hiccups the good news is basically with every single turn you take uh, you get an auto save uh so you don't really have to worry about um you know losing everything let's put it that way here we go and as you can see the turn generation I, I try to show you guys everything does take a little while but considering the amount of things that have to happen here it sort of makes sense as you can see we have a ton of other fronts we didn't even look at our italian front or our eastern front you essentially control the entire war and that's one thing where i feel like i maybe should have put strategic command on this list because in that you can select specific armies uh, but like i said this is my favorite So all of those days are resolving, you know, not everything from battles to supply, etc. Uh, and we're going to get a detailed look here at one of the battles. I really want you guys to see how much effort they put into it. Even over here, um, and this is one of the colonial fights. Um, so out in Africa somewhere, um, you can see 8,200 men lost, zero cavalry lost. The enemy, 69, 70 lost, um, or I should say, the enemy lost 8,200. Uh, and if we look at the actual battle result... Uh, we can see every single element of the battle and exactly what happened. High hit probabilities, etc. cetera. Uh, the commanding officer uh, led the unit well during the round. We also get a weather indicator about the kind of weather that was happening and the deployment uh, available at the time. So just a, a, a bevy of information. You just don't get it anywhere else, guys. Another brutal fight. Again, each of these units is meticulously drawn, and I mean they have uh, drawings for every single kind of the every single kind of unit you can imagine. As you can see, Royal Africa Corps, Bengal divisions. Um, they include absolutely everybody. And for the Central Powers, Schutztruppe brigades, Colonial African brigades. This is stuff you don't get in any other game. It's a level of detail that I feel is just totally unmatched. Um, it really just goes uh, beyond the pale, uh, to put it simply. All I ask, guys, is that if you enjoy these videos, hit that like button, uh, subscribe if you can, and, you know, the most important thing to me is watch the ads. Um, it really helps me out and, uh, of course, brings more people to the channel. Look at that. We've got some nice Belgians there waiting for us. We could have made a push, but we're not actually playing a full campaign. Again, just want you guys to get a look at that combat. Um, and, of course, just the general movement of the game. There's definitely weather, as you can see. It's a little snowy right now, it seems, in early January. Um, and all of that can affect uh, how your campaign progresses. Let's see if we get one frontline battle. We may not. We did get a nice colonial fight there. Quite a vicious one, too, considering the amount of men lost on both sides. And um, there is a separate screen, by the way, which this is important to me. may not be important to anybody else. Uh, there's a separate screen where you actually get to look at the exact casualties. And by the end of the war, it's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> it's absolutely insane, um, just the amount of men lost on both sides in this, of course, great war. Looks like we've got some French uh, moving into the shipping box there in the Atlantic. You can control these sea zones, and uh, like, you know, I mentioned supply is an issue in this game. Um, if you can control those sea zones or take over enemy supply routes, um, railroads, etc., you're going to be a lot better off. Um, and uh, you're going to be able to, of course, cut them off and potentially have a much easier chance um, at a victory. And I wasn't kidding when I said everything is included. I mean, look at this. We have the Red Sea, um, the Mandate of Palestine. Everything is included in this game.
day 12 and look at that fleet 1701 that is a massive fleet um it's it's really just the power rating there and it's not even fully um the red bar is not even fully filled but um that's something we don't want to have to face and i'm guessing they're going for these pill boxes out in the atlantic uh and there you go fifth light cruiser squadron has arrived in atlantic shipping at day 13 um man we need to get some submarines in there and yes you can get submarines uh, as well as a number of other ships. There is an entirely separate naval element to the game, um, which, there you go, um, you can control yourself. No moves here by the Italians. Pretty good idea. I don't really want our Austro-Hungarians moving either. What I'm probably going to do is construct supply depots. Those feed your frontline troops and are extremely important. It's a shame we didn't get a major battle um, here in this round, but that colonial battle is a very, very small example of what a major battle looks like. You can have up to 100,000 casualties in one fight. And again, it's based on chance. It's based on... Um, oh, here we go. Thank you, RNG. You know what? And there we go, guys. Look at that. 49,000 lost on Van Housen's uh, side. That's us. And the French lost 62,000 men. These are killed and wounded. And, of course, we've got those wonderful drawings of each unit um, and exact names. KBT, FR-24, Holstein Artillery Regiment, uh, Osterpreuss, IR number 45 Infantry Brigade. I mean, the amount of detail is, like I said, crazy, and I love it so much. Just like I showed you in the previous battles, you can go through each and every single um, phase and sort of decide for yourself what happens. Um, as you can see, we're there in San Quentin. You can take the territory over time. Um, and in fact, I believe there are even territorial decisions that can be made there. They are where you can use chlorine gas, you can send a diplomat, and over time, you can even use propaganda to bring the region to your side. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let's take a look uh, at another. Now, again, I wanted to include multiple genres in this particular video, and this is an RTS game. Uh, it's fairly recent as well. Not everybody seems to like it, and I think the reason they don't like it is because it's almost too realistic to World War I combat, which means that your troops are very easily destroyed, vice versa. Um, it's very hard to take positions, although at, at the same time, you can sort of master the charge to such a degree that it no longer feels like much of a challenge. That being said, it does have have a campaign um, you can play allied nations central powers uh, or a modified campaign although I haven't seen any currently uh, and the campaign map is actually quite impressive we'll jump in right here and uh, I'll give you guys a quick look um, same as the previous game but not as much detail in terms of supply and upgrades however you can upgrade your regions you can upgrade your supply um, you know posts etc uh, but once you jump in, um, you can actually see an entire campaign map of the First World War. Now, where this game really shines is in the frontline combat. If you guys notice that front screen, there is multiplayer. There are also historical battles, and I think those historical battles are so much fun. They give you objectives that you have to complete uh, in an effort to move on to the next battle. And look at this again, pretty decent voice acting and animations. Honoring treaties and alliances forged years before are now plunged into a conflict they cannot avoid, sparked by a single gunshot. Here on the Western Front, nations draw their battle lines. The central powers of Austria-Hungary and Germany now face the combined alliance of France, Britain and their colonies. The Great War is about to begin. Melde Gehorsams! Die russische zweite Armee wurde bei Tannenberg umfassend zurückgeschlagen. Aber ihre Truppen wurden schneller mobilisiert, als wir es erwartet hatten. Und was ist mit unserem Vormarsch durch Belgien? Aus Belgien wird erheblicher Widerstand gemeldet und das britische Expeditionsheer ist nunmehr in den Konflikt eingetreten. Unsere Befähigung, die Westfront zu überrennen, wurde ein wenig eingeschränkt. Aber ich bin zuversichtlich, dass... Paris? Bei unserem Durchbruch an der Marne erleiden wir schwere Verluste. Unsere Befehlshaber vor Ort sind versprengt. Von Kluck hat sich mit seinem Armeeverband auf das Nordufer der Enn zurückgezogen und baut dort Stellungen aus, damit wir uns für einen Großangriff auf Frankreich sammeln können. Russland im Osten, Großbritannien und Frankreich im Westen. 
Alle graben sich ein. Wir müssen wachsam bleiben. Thus the Western Front was established. From the fields of Flanders to the borders of Switzerland, the great nations would make their stand. The fate of millions was now in the hands of a few. As you can see, like really awesome entry point um, or starting video intro to the game. And as you can see here, um, this is the front line. Now, certain front line areas have an additional amount of units. You also have research points, which you can spec into. And these are everything from production increases to, uh, you know, troop um, rifle increases to poison gas. So you can do pretty much anything you can imagine. But again, where this game truly, truly shines is going to be the frontline combat. You build all your main units over here, and over time, you can actually move these frontline units, which all represent um, specific armies, uh, into their respective zones. In fact, I'll just get rid of that unread event there. Um, and... Uh, pretty enjoyable i have to say uh, again just like the other game you can play as either side you don't have to play as one side or the other anything like that um if we just go ahead and end the turn i'll show you guys how the front line can change um and as you can see um in this case the enemy doesn't have much in terms of an attack we have six core in this um, particular fight uh but it's looking like it's going to be a loss uh, nonetheless like i said the real um, beautiful part of this game are the battles, the actual battles. So we're going to jump into one of the historical battles and just take a quick fight. Although these campaign battles can be as large or small as you want them to be, depending on how you have supplied your front line. So again, we've got a number of different historical battles here, and uh, you can actually earn medals for how you do in the battle. Unfortunately, as far as the historical battles go, you don't get to select sides, unlike the campaign. You've got to take what you're going to get, essentially. Um, we're just going to take a look at um, the Battle of Verdun, just so that you guys can get a visual of it, because I want you guys to see that frontline combat. So let's begin. I'm pretty sure we also get an intro video, although I didn't play it, so shame on me, but it's just as interesting as that first video that we saw, um, really detailed, uh, and actually has some uh, real-life footage, so I think that's definitely a nice touch maybe good for me because i'm avoiding some sort of copyright issue so uh i'm not exactly disappointed to be fair really taking no time there verdun huh and, of course, the second that I paused, uh, suddenly it's ready to go. Oh, and there we go. We do get the intro. Wonderful. I hesitate to speak it since I do not wish to worry you. But from your words, it seems as though the people back home do not hear the reality of what truly happens on the front. I can hope that my words here will remind them of what their husbands, fathers, and sons have sacrificed for them. The bombardments are nearly constant, day and night. We have had no communications with the rear for almost three days, nor have we been able to get any rations. Biscuits and chocolate keep us going. But the lack of clean water is worrying. Those shells bring casualties. It is almost impossible to move without having to step over a body. They are left lying where they fell because the stretcher's teams can't get to them without falling prey to the shells themselves. And that risk is reserved for the still living. The smell is overwhelming at times. Dysentery is rampant, and the men blame the corpses and filth, perhaps rightly so. And yet, through all of this hell, we persevere. The shells destroy the lands, the barbed wire and sometimes the trenches, but the French spirit lives on. We will fight to the last man to protect this place, because it is our home. As long as we live, no Germans will pass our lines. The shells have stopped. We may be moving soon. All my love to you. We will see each other again. Gérard. Again, there's a dark beauty to this game that sort of reminds me of the Hollywood film Paths of Glory for any Stanley Kubrick fans. Um, and I really like it. It doesn't lie about the brutality of this war, and um, it shows you just how vicious it is. As you can see, this even reminds me of the anthill from Paths of Glory. Um, but we're going to just take a look here at the combat and the approach of uh, what to do. 
Now, in this particular Battle of Verdun, let's go ahead and begin. We want to try and capture as many locations as we can. Um, and we're not going to be fighting through this whole battle. I am just going to give you guys a taste of it. Um, but you can be on the offensive. You can be on the defensive. With these historical battles, you do have certain objectives. And if you don't complete them, uh, well, you essentially fail. Our boys are moving up, as you can see, to scout the fort uh, and try and take the area. Your men do have grenades, but I believe they need to be researched. Unless, of course, they're grenadiers, which I believe these men are. But look at that heavy artillery. My goodness. We need that artillery support, and hopefully we'll get it pretty soon, uh, which you can call over here. Uh, but we need to actually wait. There we go. We've got some already here as well. And this is on-map artillery. Nope, still can't fire it. The fire coordinates would be here, and we do not have enough points to use them. Let's hope we get them fairly soon. So what I'm going to do, guys, I am going to move up into the trench, and we are going to try and take this anthill. Uh, I do want to use those precision barrages. And perhaps now we have enough points to go ahead and start launching them, and we do indeed. So, let's fire one right there. Now, different barrages do different things. This one just completely destroys infantry, so I'm going to fire with that. And this one suppresses machine guns. So, if we spot any MGs, we are going to drop this arty directly on top of them. You can also zoom in in this game, so you get a pretty nice visual of what's going on. Uh, I just really like that. Let me drop some more arty on that machine gun. I don't need it firing on our men. And I'm going to get our men close enough to hopefully use some grenades here. In fact, these guys are already moving in with the grenades. And look at that. We've got some planes. And that's right, guys. We can also send in our own planes in this game. In fact, they're currently out uh, fighting, uh, fighting the enemy. Now, if at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. So, we want to put a suppression barrage. And we want to bring our grenadiers in close enough to be able to toss grenades on top of that uh, turret. Unfortunately, the suppression is not working as intended. Let's get those grenades out. Um, and in the meantime, we'll simply charge this line. As you can see, we're losing a lot of men in this charge. I expected that thing to be fully suppressed. And now we're going to bring in some heavy suppression here, too. We have taken this trench line, getting closer to the C point, of course. But now we've got a whole bunch more enemies to worry about here. And in this game, you can re research, again, anything from incendiary rounds to poison gas. So things can get pretty damn interesting. Anyway, I don't want to spend too much time on this game or else I'll never leave it. Uh, let's move on to game number three. Hello there, everybody. First of all, a huge thank you for the positive reception on my top three American Civil War games. Again, these are totally subjective lists, and I'm really just trying to bring you guys the best games that I'm aware of. Today, we're going to take a look at three incredible World War I games. Some of them are older, some of them are turn-based, some of them are, um, you know, real-time. Uh, but the first one I want to show you here is called Commander the Great War. Again, I really haven't heard much on this particular game, um, or I should say I haven't seen many people cover it, but it gives you a turn-based view um, and a pretty straightforward uh, I don't want to say simple, but just a straightforward turn-based view of the entire First World War. You can play as the Entente, you could play as the Central Powers, and there's even a delicious multiplayer option right here. So, um, if you want to do that, you can do that with friends too. Let's take a look at one of the briefing videos, and then we're going to take a look at the game itself. Uh, let's launch 1915 as the Central Powers. Early 1917, the United States of America are mobilizing a massive army. Its destination? France, the Western Front. The Allies thus gain access to millions of fresh soldiers and tons of military equipment. 
This means that for Germany, time is running out. The French and British, however, are not waiting idly and prepare for the offensive once again. They are confident that the use of new weapons and tactics can decide the war within 48 hours. Control of the air, however, is currently returning to the Germans. The arrival of new German fighter planes is taking a heavy toll on Allied pilots. This may explain why British ground patrols were surprised to find German outposts unoccupied, only to discover that the whole German army has withdrawn to new defensive positions. This formidable Hindenburg line seriously disrupted Allied plans for the spring. Yet the German defensive strategy has reinforced Allied commanders' belief that to end the stalemate, they need a decisive breakthrough. For the simple soldier in the muddy trenches of the battlefield, three years of ongoing war have brought little change. So can I just say, starting off, the voice acting they chose for this game is fantastic. I can't the tell you how many um, RTS games have um, recently uh, not been great in terms of voice acting. But here we go, guys. Um, the game has begun. Again, you might be looking at the screen and thinking, yeah, this doesn't look all that pretty uh but there is so much here of course currently the ai is playing here on the eastern front um and so we get to watch their moves they're sending some bombers sending some infantry doing anything they can to dislodge us of course And once, you, uh, once we get to our lines, um, I'll show you guys what we're able to do with technology and production and things like that. They are really going for that, um, that front over there in the Alps, trying to break through to Trento. Here come the British as well. As you can see, you can swap units out, bring new units in, resupply existing units, and replenish existing units. And also, if I'm not mistaken, cut off supply lines, but don't quote me on that. See, a lot can be done by either player, and you don't have to play as the Central Powers. You could play as the Entente if you so wished. So many movements here. The trench lines are perfectly represented. You can also fortify these lines if you wish. And diplomacy is a thing in this game. If you wanted to, I mean, I don't think you should. You could eventually declare war on Switzerland and go through there. Uh, but of course, uh, like I said, the trench is alive. You can strengthen it. You can break through. Uh, you could destroy enemy trenches. Uh, but really, the goal here is going to be production and research. You want to make sure to outproduce and outresearch your opponent, uh, and of course, uh, move your troops wisely. That ability to move troops in and out is really significant in this game. And yeah, that's right. You've got air units, you've got ship units, pretty much anything you're looking for. Um, a really, really good tutorial system, as you can see right here. I'm going to turn off the advice messages. But nonetheless, um, it's extremely, extremely easy to play, um, easy to follow, especially for a first time, uh, you know, like, uh, I guess, strategy gamer. This one's not bad. I'm bringing my artillery up because I want them to help us, and I know the Belgian troops are a little stronger, but you actually get a combat prognosis of what will likely happen. Um, so, you know, before you attack, maybe give it some thought. Uh, this unit has some artillery support, which is never good. Nonetheless, I am foolhardy enough to attempt an attack. And as you can see, we actually did quite a bit of damage right there to that Belgian unit out of Calais. You can also, like I said, use your air units to deliver a blow to the enemy if you want. Um, 
Uh, over here, we can also use our air units to engage enemy air units. And again, it includes all fronts, so both the east and west. Uh, some of you may find um, that in this list, I did not include Strategic Command First World War. Maybe I should have made it an honorable mention, but I sort of believe that this was the predecessor to that. Uh, in any case, let me know what you think down below, and let's take a look at game number two. Again, these games are in no particular order. I'm not saying one is better than the other. I just think these are the top three.